Okay, we'll call this meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation following. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, please bless our elected officials. Grant them the wisdom to know and the courage to do what is right for all citizens. Amen. 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 And roll call, please. Okay. Allen? Here. LaFour? Here. Mistravich? Here. Rindell? Here. Ricks? Here. Schultz? Here. Warren? Here. Good to see everybody here tonight again. Approval of minutes for the special council meeting that was held on March 11th. Motion to be in order? I'll make the motion. Support. Motion made and support. Any discussion? Be or not? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. We also have the regular council meeting minutes to approve from March 4th. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Support. Motion has been made and supported. Any discussion on these minutes? No. If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. We move on to audience comments on any non-agenda items. I think, well, no, we have somebody here who's not on the agenda. <laughs> Please come on up uh, again and state your name and, and the organization you're with. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me tonight. My name is Heather Zielinski, and I'm here as a representative of the Autism Society of Greater Detroit. The reason that I wanted to come today was to introduce myself to the city and to its council. The Autism Society of Greater Detroit had been around for a while. Back about eight years ago, there were um, some small affiliate organizations in the state of Michigan that were all tied to our national organization. National decided that they wanted to shut the doors to those and come back with a model that allowed one representative for each state. Uh, the Autism Society of Greater Detroit is the representative for the state of Michigan. The Autism Society is a 501c3 completely volunteer-led organization. Um, I'm in Macomb County, I live in Warren, but we eventually want to be able to cover resources across the entire state. With the changes that have been made to our organization, that's where I kind of need your help in spreading the word and making sure that we can reach everybody that is on the spectrum, everybody that uh, loves somebody on the spectrum, everybody that cares for people on the spectrum, and just everybody. I've realized in my experience that the things that we can do for the autistic community don't just help individuals with autism. My father's a veteran, he has PTSD, a lot of the tools that I would use or coach people to use um, also help individuals with PTSD, people with anxiety, people with ADHD, individuals with Down syndrome. I guess my point is, is that we can all do something to help someone. Um, we, our job as an organization is to be a resource for families. So families will call us if they have a need. My job is to then find somebody in the communities that they can use as that resource. So whether it's a therapy or an attorney, if I cannot find a resource, then we write the grant, we partner with people in the community and build that resource. To get those grants, we need community engagement. So my ask tonight is that if you guys have um, events in the community that you think we can supplement, maybe providing a safe space for individuals that need it, or creating an autism event. April is Autism Awareness Month. Um, I would love to have the opportunity to do that. The idea is to just work with individuals to help everybody, whether you're autistic or not, be able to live life more fully. And I hope that we can count on the city of Richmond to be a partner in that. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to address the council at this time? We will move on. Adoption of agenda, Mr. S uh, Manager, we have a change? Uh, yes, we would request that you add item nine, street sweeper repairs. City Council, any changes? Motion to accept the amended agenda as presented. I'll make the motion. Support. Any discussion? Be not, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. We have a nine issues on the items for consideration this evening. Is there a motion for the consent agenda? 
I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. Motion when made and support. There is no discussion according to our rules on the motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. We move on to uh, items for consideration. Our first one is con consideration of approving the request to conduct the National Day of Prayer. Mr. City Manager. Council is scheduled to consider a request from the Richmond area pastors to recognize Thursday, May 2nd, 2024 as the National Day of Prayer. In previous years, the city has recognized this by allowing the Richmond area pastors to publicly pray in front of City Hall. Um, this is the first year that Pastor Wise is uh, coordinating the event, uh, taking it over from uh, Pastor Egley. And uh, we did check with the Richmond Area Good Old Days Festival, and they are willing, as they have done in the last couple of years, to provide uh, the pizza luncheon that immediately follows. Thank you. Pastor, would you like to make any comments? I know you like microphones. So. <laughs> uh, just wanted to say uh, this was I've been part of the community for many years and it's greatly appreciated uh, what our City Council does the tenure that has been with many serving over many years um, I've been in town since 06 and it's just been uh, a joy to serve I was here when uh, Pastor Egley's father still led the day of prayer and I think the EMS actually brought him in the ambulance not not with lights but he was there and that was one of his final years and then uh, Pastor Russ Egley took over from his dad and has done a fantastic job and then he is handing that on to me so my aim is just to serve our community well and just express that we appreciate a community that recognizes we desperately need the Lord and so we gather to pray and to honor him in that way and to lift up all the local and national uh, those who serve elected judges schools the area churches so I'll be uh, picking up from Pastor Russ and just connecting with the pastors and in, in, in the area that are able to come and be part of that day thank you thank you is there a motion I'll make the motion to authorize the mayor to sign the proclamation recognizing Thursday, May 2nd, 2024 as a national day of prayer and to invite the members of the public to pray beginning at 1220. Support. Most been made and supported. Any discussion on this? Be not. Any audience participation on this item? Back to the table. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. Item number two is consideration of special event request, our craft brewery. Mr. City Manager. Council is scheduled to consider approving a special event request from StarCraft Brewery for their fifth anniversary celebration. Uh, the owners of StarCraft would like to again close a portion of Water Street from Forest to the Alleyway Drive approach at the back of their building, along with a portion of the Forest Street sidewalk and tree lawn area that runs in front of the two buildings and then the uh, parking the city portion of the parking lot uh, to the north of their business um, they would like to uh, close the parking lot from Friday morning July 19th through uh, Sunday evening July 21st uh, to allow the, for the set up and tear down of the fencing in the tent this is the same time frame that was approved last year uh, we, we had tweaked a little bit last year so this is the same time frame as they did last year uh, and then um, at this point they're not requesting a food truck but may come back at a later point for that well mr. stars it seemed like five years no it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't, it, doesn't. it came up fast yeah, it, it really has fast, yes. it has we're glad you're with us again uh, tonight yep. would you like to add anything um, the only change that we'll be making is uh, Saturday at the end of the day Saturday we will be opening up Water Street we won't be using it Sunday. Okay. So we thought that might help out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because even, even last year was kind of, Sunday was kind of vacant on that street. So okay. we have the petting zoo on Saturday in that area. So Very basically good. that's it. Same as, except for the food trucks maybe at a later date, we'll revisit that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, is there a motion? 
I'll make a motion to approve the special event request from StarCraft Brewery for the fifth anniversary celebration on Friday, July 19th, 2024, to Sunday, July 21st, 2024, from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Friday, 12 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Saturday, 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Sunday, including the tent and outdoor music. The approval is contingent with upon the following. Permission to close the portion of Water Street from Forest to the Alleyway Drive and a portion of Forest Street sidewalk tree lawn area in front of their buildings from Friday morning, July 19th through Saturday evening, July 20th, right? You're not going to do you're not going to close Water Street on Sunday. Right. Yep. Water Street will be open on and Sunday. And allow time to set up and tear down for the fencing and tent. Support. Support. What's my made and supported. Any further discussion on this? Any audience participation on this item? Back to the table. Well, congratulations on your five years. Yeah, thank you. It certainly doesn't seem that long, <laughs> but uh, things are going well. Yep, going well. Five We're hanging, and hanging in there, and then... Uh, of course, our anniversary event gives us our boost, so. Yeah, very good. Helps out a lot. Very good. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Item number three is consideration of special event request, mobile food vendor, BB Park. Mr. City Manager. The City Council is scheduled to consider a request from uh, Ashley Amal. Um, skip that uh, for a mobile food vendor uh, for an event that she has rented the community center on April 20th 2024 for a birthday party uh, under the city's food truck policy if the uh, somebody having a food truck for a private event at their house doesn't require council approval if, if the food trucks just servicing the guests of the birthday party or the graduation party wedding party whatever um, however this is the first time that somebody that's having uh, a private rental of the community center is requesting to have a food truck to service the guests at their private event um, with the popularity of renting the community center for family reunions, um, graduation parties, uh, that sort of thing, and then the popularity of using food trucks to service and cater graduation parties in particular, or, or birthday parties. Uh, we don't feel this will probably be our last um, request of this nature. Um, we have uh, Marga Van Hove, our recreation actor who's here tonight, has spoken at length with the applicant. Uh, they are bringing in the food truck to only uh, provide ice cream to their birthday party guests not the general public uh, they put a one hour time frame they thought likely the food truck will probably be there a half hour to 45 minutes um, but uh, they would not be selling to the general public but only there to service the people at the at the birthday party um, all rentals at the uh, park do have a rental worker uh, so there will be somebody from rec staff there uh, during the party um, the uh, Recreation Board met uh, last week to review this request. They did recommend approval with the idea that our rental staff will kind of watch and see how this goes this first time. Uh, we would also create like some type of lawn sign or A-frame sign uh, to put out there to say uh, sales to party guests only, not for general public or something that we might be able to use uh, repeatedly. Um, uh, but under that, those conditions, uh, that no sales would occur to the general public. They did recommend approval. Thank you, sir. Margo, would you like to add to that? Um, no, I think everything was covered. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve Ashley Amol Fatano's special event request, mobile food vendor, street scoops and smoothies for their April 20th, 2024 community center rental in BB Street Park with the following condition. No sales will occur to the general public. Support. Which one made and supported discussion? <clears throat> I, I have a question just mm -hmm. in regards, it's kind of regards to adding a not for sale to the public. So there's really no need to have this food truck like really visible in the parking lots or is there, did you, do we know where we're gonna kind of put it to maybe avoid some of that? Um, she had said when we had spoken that she would probably just have them pull up to the end of the sidewalk ramp right outside the front door. Okay. Um, yeah. Just to serve her customers right. or her guests from two to three, two to two forty-five. Okay. Because then I think also not only 
we don't necessarily want them selling, but I would assume since it's a private party, they really wouldn't want the public like coming up and mm -hmm. you know, kind of in a sense invading their party. Right. You know, so I think it's good that we kind of have a sign or something that does that since this is the first one that we can kind of hash it out and determine it. So that's good for everybody. So. Yep. If I remember correctly, at Parks and Rec, there's no money exchanging hands. The person that is asking for this is paying for roughly 64 people. Correct. She has already prepaid for her guests. So there is no, be we're not going to see no any money. money going over the counter Correct. per se. So that yeah. that was an issue at the Park and Rec yeah. meeting that how are we going to know who is who and uh, yeah. if somebody tries to put money over the you know, <laughs> counter, uh, yeah. they're not, that's not going to be allowed. Yeah. So. Right. yeah, I think if we had the signs, that'll really help because you wouldn't, I mean, you want the public coming up and than being disappointed because they can't do it. But as long as we say it's a private party and yeah. it's just for that, then I think everybody's kind of like, oh, okay, they understand and it would yeah. be a yeah. good good thing for everybody. Yeah, and that's what we talked about too is yeah. having a, some kind of a sign that we can use mm -hmm. uh, in the future if necessary, you know, private party or whatever. Yeah. That no, was a good discussion at Parks and Recreation. They, right. they hammered it pretty good before uh, they gave their uh, approval to move it on to the city council. So appreciate uh, their work on that anything else any audience participation on this item back to the table all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye aye against motion does pass item number four is consideration of dnr submissions mr city manager the city council is scheduled to consider approving a city of richmond application and resolution before you tonight uh, for our application to the DNR grants. Uh, there's three grants available. Uh, the one that uh, administration and the recreation board believes is the most uh, promising for us to apply for is the Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund. Uh, we recently had the DNR approve our five-year rec plan, uh, which allows us to apply for these grants. Um, we had uh, three grant applications that went in under the spark grants so uh, some of the elements of those projects we're moving forward with uh, such as the splash pad and the drainage improvements so we looked at the remaining elements of those spark grants both uh, myself and uh, recreation director Ben Hove and then uh, myself and the mayor uh, prior to the rec board meeting uh, and then went over the kind of the elements that we felt would make a good grant application package which would include uh, a new uh, play structure uh, to replace the Tutkazanium that's coming to end of life, uh, a small pavilion. Uh, we have so many people that rent out our current small pavilion between the community center and the bathrooms um, for uh, graduation parties, family reunions, everything. So it's pretty much booked all summer long once it opens up. Uh, so a second one kind of between the community center and the sand volleyball courts would still be in proximity of the building or the bathrooms, but yet still have enough distance to allow for two family reunions to occur at the same time and still have those people enjoy the park amenities uh, for their guests. Uh, we also talked about uh, in our master plan, there's a need for a shade structure at the pool. Um, if we locate it correctly, we can have a shade structure that kind of covers the pool, the potential splash pad, and the Tutkazanium. And then uh, we also talked about reconfiguring in the Spark Grants the half-court basketball into pickleball. Um, we think that's probably going to be a little more compatible uh, with the splash pad, uh, with the location of the splash pad sometimes than, than the half-court basketball. Um, and we would relocate that inside the full court and have kind of the options of playing different ways in, in there. And then uh, uh, Public Service Director Getzinger also provided uh, estimates for concrete work for to link all these things, the hike bike path, and to improve ADA compliance with all of those elements. So um, we're still finalizing all of the uh, cost estimates for the different elements. So um, kind of my uh, motion is for just a... 30% uh, local match. Um, we're we're looking the the max that we can go on the uh, grant application is 400,000. Um, we are kind of listing the the potential splash pad that we'll be doing as as also kind of in kind um, 
money that we're doing. Uh, the minimum local match is 25%, but you get points for going over that, so we're recommending 30% uh, local match, um, which would take us up to 130000 roughly, uh, if we did the four, full $400,000 grant application. Thank you, sir. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion to approve resolution 2024-4 and the submission of the DNR Michigan National Resources Trust Fund Grant Application, the City of Richmond titled BB Street Park Improvements for New Place Structure, Shade Structure, Small Pavilion Pickleball Courts, along with concrete work to improve ADA accessibility with a 30% local match. Support. Most of them mo uh, made and supported. I'm sorry. Margo, did you have anything you wanted to add to this? I don't. I don't. I'm just looking forward to these park upgrades. It'd be great if we could get it. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Uh, we've we've had the motion, and uh, again, it's been support. Any discussion here at the table? A lot of work went into this by all involved, Parks and Recreation, and as John noted, some of the other people that have been involved in this. Um, this came up kind of quick. It's a uh, April 1st deadline. I believe April 1st deadline. So yes. we had to get together really fast to put as much together as we could that we thought would be successful in getting on now being we just had our plan approved in the last mm -hmm. Month maybe five is it? Month? Yeah, a couple plan? yeah, is it a couple months now that months we've had now, but yeah, yeah, they we sent it in in October and or finally got yeah. everything. Yes Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so anyhow um, this is what's before you. Any questions or comments? Any public comments? Questions? Back to the table. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Uh, item number five concern. Consideration of wastewater treatment plant operating contract with easy operations, Mr. City Manager. The City Council or the City of Richmond's wastewater treatment plant operations have been outsourced for over 20 years. Uh, Tetra Tech held the contract through June 30th, 2022, at which time Easy Operations took over the final two years of the contract. Uh, Easy Operations have performed well since taking over the contract, communicating regularly with the city and with the Eagle, uh, Michigan Department of Energy, Great Lake, and the Environment. Uh, they've actively self-performed repairs, cleaning, and maintenance around the plant, and have genuinely been cost conscious. Um, uh, again, it was uh, kind of the employees um, taking over and forming their own company, uh, and, and stepping forward, they've done an excellent job uh, working with us, uh, in particular working with Jim. Um, and uh, they are proposing an annual base fee of 295000 and keeping that for the five-year contract. So we're very pleased with that. Um, and then uh, with us tonight is Beth Eldridge, Brent Ames, and Brian Hup Hupchick. Hupchick. <laughs> Thank you. The, the three Bs. Um, and, and so uh, we see them often here, and, and I know they even come to some of the community events, such as like the Chili Cook-Off and, and other events. So uh, they're here to answer any questions along with Jim. Thank you. Jim, do you have anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, not really. Just to reiterate the uh, city manager's comments, I do feel they've done an excellent job. They definitely have taken ownership of the, the plant. and communicate regularly you know and they're they're and they're very cost conscious so we it, to me it is a benefit to the city having them there and we've seen a cost savings in the last couple of years and again the ownership is the big thing every time i go out there uh brent explains projects they're working on they're painting it just it's uh it's it's good they're doing a good job and i'm excited to see them interested in continuing that very good very good Anybody? Everybody? <laughs> Comments? Um, just thank you for having us and uh, considering us for the next uh, contract. Um, we appreciate it. Um, well, you proposed a very nice contract. No raises in five years. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> we like that. Yep. And, uh, and, and it's well known throughout the council uh, that you guys, since you've taken over two years ago, have done an outstanding job. And you're part, part of us. 
Um, you know, you come to the various things all our employees come to, and that, that makes you part of the family. It, it makes it easier for us to work with you, and, and evidently, if you can work with Jim, you can work with anybody, you know, so. <laughs> we Anyhow. appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Motion? I'll make a motion to approve a five-year wastewater treatment plan operation and maintenance contract with easy operation and maintenance for the time period from July 1st. 2024 to June 30th, 2029, with the expense charge and appropriate line item sanitary sewer and water funds, and authorize the city manager to execute the contract as the owner's representative. Support. Motion's been made and supported. Any discussion? Pastor, any comments? <laughs> back, to, back to the table. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. Again, thank you guys thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks, guys. Item number six is cons consideration of design engineering for Howard Street. Mr. City Manager. Howard Street is anticipated to be reconstructed in fiscal year 2930. Uh, the project will include water main replacement, storm sewer, sanitary sewer repairs, curb and gutter. Um, and, and a reconstruction of the road. Uh, the city will be working to construct a new storm sewer outlet at Division and Howard. Um, and we're also working with uh, DTE and Frontier to consolidate the utilities to one side of the road versus both. Um, in anticipation of that, we're requesting approval uh, for engineering services through Tetra Tech uh, for the Howard Street reconstruction project. Thank you. Jim, anything to add to that? Uh, obviously, we've been working on various aspects of this project for a few years. This is just trying planning ahead. We, we need to complete this work in order to get uh, telephone poles removed. They're on both sides of the road, so we want to consolidate, like the city manager said. So this is a necessary step to kind of keep moving so when we get to the actual design and construction of the road, there are no obstacles at that time. And uh, for the public, you're looking at when could this possibly be done as far as the road because there's many many people that have lived on that road for a very long time who have been waiting sure. well we're certainly we're right now we're anticipating fiscal year 29 30 as far as the road reconstruction okay. yeah thank you <coughs> is there a motion i'll make a motion to authorize the expense of twenty two thousand dollars for engineering services for the Howard Street reconstruction project by Tetra Tech with expenses charged to the appropriate line item in the major street fund. Support. It's been made and support. Discussion? Again, this is this is strictly engineering for those at home. We're good. Correct. This is where you're going to find out how it is, how we would eventually be able to run uh, yeah, drains the, through there and everything else. The, the majority of this is... Uh, to identify property lines right away uh, and some basic design. There will be design of the roadway will actually happen at a later date. This is really to, uh, again, allow to give direction to DT on where our utilities are going to go, where the road's going to go, so that they can move their poles out of, out of the way. Okay. Okay. All right. Discussion? I tell you, there's a lot of people have been waiting for this. An awfully long time. Howard Street, uh, <clears throat> we've been told for decades, literally, that there's no place for the water to go. And uh, we have to give him credit for figuring we it do. out. <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> yep, no, Jim's done a great job kind of working with the engineers, with the county, with, you know, Macomb County Public Works. Kind of coming up with a plan, uh, the council and the public works department, you know, entered into an agreement where we improved the drainage along the railroad tracks on the city hall side, um, all in anticipation of ultimately being able to do curb and gutter on Howard Street. Yeah, and we had been told yeah. all these years that there was no way uh, it wasn't going to happen. And um, it's just the way the, the land lays, and we would have to have a lift station and everything else. That would be just extremely expensive. So credit to you, Jim. Um, I don't think you should get any more of a raise than anybody else this year. <laughs> but um, you know I love to kid you. You've, you've been, uh, you've been uh, a great, great resource for our, 
DPW activities and, and uh, your engineering certainly uh, has helped the city of Richmond uh, since you've been here. Appreciate that. Uh, we don't want to see you go away, so we'll we'll probably approve this for you. <laughs> Give you something to do for the next uh, five years. So. <laughs> Any other comments? Any public participation on this item? You guys want to get a stab at them at all? Or? <laughs> no? Okay. okay. <laughs> Back to the table. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion does pass. We look forward to that in the future. Item number seven is consideration of board appointments for the rec board. Mr. City Manager. The terms for Sarah Gillies and Lenore Warren uh, expire as of March 31st, 2024 on the Recreation Board. Uh, so we have received both their applications and they're before you tonight for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion? I make the motion to reappoint Sarah Gillis to the Recreation Board for a two-year term with expiration date of March 31st, 2026. Support. Support. What's the and support? Any discussion? done a good job she's been on, uh, maybe she, did she fill a spot for us mm -hmm. yeah she filled a spot for us so she's been on for a little over a year now maybe um, but of course uh, she had uh, a lot of experience and uh, has lived here for a long time and is, seems to be a good uh, addition to our board there so happy that she uh, came I didn't even have to twist her arm either did you I did not no no <laughs> I can't believe this so she must enjoy it so we're looking forward to her serving uh, for another uh, at least another couple of years here um, any other discussion any audience participation on this item back to the table all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. against motion passes we have one more motion I'll make a motion to reappoint Lenore Warren <clears throat> excuse me to the Recreation Board for a two-year term with an expiration date of March 31st 2026 support the made and supported John you didn't support that <laughs> no. it gets her out of the house once a, a, a month there John yeah I know. yeah yeah probably makes you cook your own supper right yep yeah no, uh, she has been on the board for a number of years and uh, is uh, not afraid to speak up and uh, has done a great job uh, while she's been there and uh, is you usually can count on her always making the meetings uh, also so uh, in a very busy life otherwise as a teacher so we appreciate her also uh, coming back again and uh, serving on that park and rec board any other comments any comments from the public on this back to the table John you got your last shot here all in favor of the motion <laughs> signify by saying aye. Aye. aye aye against motion does pass we thank both of them again for uh, coming back to help us run this city uh, item number eight is consideration of appointing a council liaison to the rec board mr. city manager council is scheduled to consider the appointment of an ex officio member on the recreation board in accordance with the recreation board bylaws mayor ricks is currently serving in that role uh, and the term expires as of March 31st 2024 thank you is there anybody that would like to serve on that board you <laughs> I do like that but I just thought it maybe somebody else would like to after 20 years uh. probably ask the rec board they want you back yeah now. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't think any of them are here so we're okay <laughs> other than her you know yeah yeah is there a motion then I make a motion to appoint Tim Ricks mayor Tim Ricks as City Council's ex officio member on the Recreation Board with an expiration date of March 31st 2025 support most been made and supported is there any discussion any comments from the public back to the table right away all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye aye, aye. against <clears throat> motion does pass thank you all right uh, on our amended agenda we have number nine the sweeper repairs mr. city manager uh, the city owns a 2008 Elgin Whirlwind Street Sweeper. Uh, the sweeper was purchased, used in 2012-2013 fiscal year. Um, we are building up our DPW equipment fund in order to be able to replace this piece of equipment, but we're a little bit, 
a little bit f away from being able to do that, probably in another year or two. Um, but in the meantime, we do need to get this one working. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll not be able to be doing uh, street sweeping. So uh, with a couple years to go on building up that fund, we are recommending uh, replacement of the valves versus just repairing the valves. And uh, if you have any questions on actually details of the work being done, Jim is here to answer those. Uh, but the total amount is $7,451 and we would request that you waive the purchasing ordinance requirements. Thank you, sir. Jim, anything to add? Uh, first, I apologize for the late edition. We were trying to get this quote. It took them a couple of weeks really to get it to us, and it was a little late. But uh, most of the uh, uh, cost is actually materials, the parts. There's not a lot of labor, at least on the air valves portion of, of the work. As city manager mentioned, we don't have quite enough money for a new sweeper. I do believe, based on our trends, equipment rental revenue, that uh, we're, we're coming into fiscal year 24, 25, I believe in 25, 26, that we'll have the money to, to purchase new sweeper. This has unfortunately been quite a, an expensive piece of equipment to maintain for the city. We've uh, taken it numerous times to both AIS and Bell Equipment for multiple issues, air being a recurring one. Uh, I would I would say the sweeper that we intend to replace it with will probably be more mechanical and less air driven because of this experience. Sim probably similar to the style, it's somewhat similar to the style that was previously owned by the city. It's, it's just easier to maintain. It does still does a good job, uh, but again, we do need to sweep the streets. Unfortunately, we've s there's a lot of times where we want to sweep and we haven't been able to. We're certainly hoping that this repair will uh, last for the life of the equipment that we expect to have it and so we can try to do a better job of keeping the streets clean. Very good. Thank you. Is there a motion before discussion? I'll make a motion to waive the purchasing ordinance requirements due to section 64-53D and authorize the expense of $7,451 for repairs to the city's 2008 Engling Worldwind Street Sweeper by AIS equipment and the funds charged to appropriate line item, general fund, DPW, and equipment maintenance. Support. Most have been made and supported. Any further discussion or comments on this item? Generally, what's a new one cost? Uh, 300000 300000 yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Any comments from the public? Back to the table. Uh, roll call. Uh, LaFour? Yes. Ms. Dravich? Yes. Rindell? Yep. Ricks? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Warren? Yes. Allen? Yes. Well, motion passes. Thank okay. You. I'm shocked that you weren't looking for like general fund, you know, amendment or something to get a brand new one. <laughs> yeah. Next, yeah, next year. Yeah. <laughs> Couple <laughs> years out. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have room for it in your new barn? We, we, you, well, we have will. room for this one, so we'll have room for a new oh, one. Oh, there you go. All right. Great, great. All right, we move on to miscellaneous matters from the city manager, sir. Uh, just the last week and this week, uh, the treasurer and I are spending a lot of time meeting with department <laughs> directors and going through the upcoming budget uh, with the idea that we will have our first budget workshop, uh, the second <coughs> meeting in April. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on, council comments. Michael? Um, just one thing. Um, last week, uh, I was able to represent the city at the MML uh, Capital Conference, which is the Michi Michigan Municipal League. So it uh, gave us the opportunity to meet with other cities and villages and go over various things. But it also allows us to have uh, dedicated time with our state senator, Dan Lowers, and then also our um, U.S. Our a representative, district representative, uh, Jamie Green, who, as we know, was a formal city council member at this table. So it was good. They had us with, for breakfast and talk about various things. And one of the hot ones is revenue sharing, and things are looking good for that for this year and stuff. So it was it was good. So thank you for allowing me to go. It was uh, it's always it's always a good time. We well, appreciate you taking the time out of your personal life uh, to do that for us, Dennis. I'll tell you the same. Jimbo? Uh, nothing nightmare. Um, I would just like to congratulate Rags on their um, 
historic tea that was this past Saturday. Um, it's a, always a great fundraiser. I think it's probably their best fundraiser that they have. Um, they had 28 tables. Um, as far as I know, they were all full and um, a nice guest speaker. So it was a lovely afternoon. Very good. Very good. John? Nothing. Rob? Nothing. Okay. Um, I have uh, something that I was uh, informed of today by the um, uh, Lee Elementary uh, School principal, uh, which I'd like to share with everybody. Um, and I think it's on their sign uh, now out in front of the school. But this is the second year in a row that they have received the top proficiency in English language arts and math in all of Macomb County. So I believe that's something our community can be very proud of. And uh, congratulations to her and her entire staff at the Willie Elementary uh, for showing just what a great school uh, we have over there. So uh, we go to the calendar. Uh, of course, we have the Easter egg scramble this Saturday. Uh, and again, we'll remind you, 1030 sharp. So you want to get there a little bit early so you can get uh, to where it is your three and four year olds will be, your five and six year olds will be, and your seven through 10 year olds will be. Any question, 727-3064 for our parks and recreation. Uh, this is something new. Oh, this is for the uh, eclipse. Um, where is this? Rob, do you read that? Oh, it's over at the library. library. Yeah. Um, they'll have the solar eclipse on April 8th from 2.45 to 3.45. I'm going to read this. Join us to safely view the solar eclipse. Participants will be provided with eclipse glasses and will be able to use other viewing devices to watch the eclipse. Uh, there's a limit of 40 participants. If weather interferes with viewing, live footage will be available inside. Any questions on that? That's for ages five and up. And they like you to sign up in person or by phone uh, as soon as uh, possible. And the phone number there is 727-2665. Again, uh, library, uh, this is something new, food for thought. Uh, the Lois Wagner Memorial Library is excited to be part of the Gleaners Community Food Bank's Food for Thought campaign in partnership with the Library Network and Suburban L Library Cooperative. We are collecting non-perishable canned goods to donate to Gleaners from April 1st through April 26th. Again, if you have any questions, 727-2665 for the library. Also, the library has the Spring Book and More sale. That will be held April 17th through 20th on Wednesday, 5 to 7. Also on Thursday and Friday from 9 to 5. Um, any donations uh, can be accepted at the library during these business hours. I believe that's an annual. So that's that. We go to the, uh, the calendar today being the 18th, first day of spring tomorrow. You wouldn't know it by the temperature and the snow out there, but it, it, uh, it's Michigan. 7 p.m. on Wednesday will be uh, the rescheduled EDC meeting right here at City Hall at 7 o'clock. Uh, the big uh, annual Friends of the Library puzzle sale will be on the 23rd this Saturday. Uh, that will be conducted from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So go see the rabbit uh, over at the uh, BB Park and then head on over for the puzzle sale at the Friends of the Library at Los Wagoner Memorial Library. Uh, we start uh, the, I think it's a half a day on this Friday, the 22nd, uh, and the kids will be on spring break through the 29th and of course uh, I believe they're going back to school on Monday the day after Easter I believe although I believe I heard something different Emily have you heard anything I Are hope they go they're going back on Monday <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's my grandsons are telling us that yeah no we don't go to school Monday that must be what it is so anyhow, watch out for the kids as they'll be out and about. There are special uh, days at the auditorium uh, during spring break for the kids. Uh, again, um, can we see that on your website? You can, at the Facebook page. Right? Okay, and also, if all else fails, call 727-3064 Monday through Thursday, and, and uh, they could talk to a live human being to tell them what's going on at the odd during the, during the break. Okay, is there anything else that we need to add to the calendar? 
being not there is uh, any other business of the City Council which should be brought up now if not Michael motion to adjourn be in order I'll make a motion to adjourn support motion been made and supported there is no discussion on the adjournment motion all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. against motion does pass we thank you for being here tonight